Hi! In this and the series of videos to follow, we will discuss the basic building blocks underpinning the concepts outlined in Craig Hutton's book, Mining Economics Explained. A fundamental idea is that of the primacy of the ore deposit. We often hear CEOs and executives say that the ore body dictates, but what does this mean in practice? Early on in his career, Craig had the good fortune to work with strong entrepreneurially minded mining colleagues. While many fundamental principles were distilled, the primacy of the ore body was fundamental. Much like in marketing, where the motto is, location, 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 the motto born was, the ore body, the ore body, the ore body. The ore body is the single and most fundamental ingredient to mining economics. Not understanding an ore body's peculiar economic signature has led miners, in the past, to overcapitalize their operations and make investors pay for redundant capacity. During the last supercycle, the mantra was, go big or go home. The idea was that big is better because economies of scale can be captured. This led to a massive industry-wide overcapitalization in capacity and redundancy that led to the shareholder value carnage in 2012 and 2013 when metal prices started falling. Accountants brutalized balance sheets with impairments that quickly translated into a stock market rug. What followed was a new mantra, value over volume. Our goal in this set of videos is to unpack basic economics and apply the concepts to the mining industry. The ideas and algorithms presented have all been tried and tested and speak directly to linking economics to the ore body. Thank you, Jason. Before we look at the basic building blocks for optimizing an ore deposit, it is worthwhile to consider a few ideas and concepts. The first is, cash is king. An ore deposit has no intrinsic economic value, not until its cash-generating capacity is understood. Without investment and, and without a value proposition it is worthless. Without the demonstrated ability of a mineral deposit to generate cash, the mobilization of economic resources to investment will not happen. The second concept is optimization and dynamic modeling. A comprehension of the basic elements allows us to contextualize the more complex elements of mine optimization. The third, key concepts for dynamic optimization modeling. What has always been missing in mine optimization is a dynamic modeling tool to trade off multiple variables simultaneously and in a comprehensible manner. The fourth, comprehending the cardinal elements of free cash flow. A basic comprehension of the key elements of free cash flow related to mine optimization is useful when deconstructing a complex multidimensional and dynamic optimization algorithm. The fifth, the hill of value. The hill of value is a great representation of a complex set of calculations that underpin the optimization of a mining proposition. Understanding what drives value it to have a full appreciation of the key value maximization elements. Let's discuss each of these in further detail. I agree Maya, cash is king. Today, it is fashionable to downplay the importance of the shareholder and just regard them as other stakeholders. Investors in mining are a peculiar breed of investor. They are high-risk, high-reward, and long-on patience. They are asked to invest large sums of money into a project and then be patient until the first dividend is paid. It is sobering to note that mines can take anything from a couple of years to decades before the first rock is processed and the first dividend check arrives. In the time from when the first investment is made to when the first dividend check arrives, significant risks and uncertainties must be contended with, namely, price volatility, commodity cycles, taxation, and royalty regime uncertainties, nationalization, and free carry equity grabs, inflation, supply chain disruptions, skill shortages, and changing macrodynamics, to name but a few. Alfred Rappaport said that in order to reward these high-risk, high-reward patient investors, it is required to create maximum excess economic value for shareholders. This, in his view, is the true test of corporate strategy 
and the only reliable measure of success. To achieve this, an ore deposit must be optimized to maximize the net present value that a peculiar deposit can yield. Many a mine fails because management second guesses the optimization of the ore deposit. As a result, owners are often forced to pay for something greater and more expensive because the operators have a poor comprehension of economics. Craig's mantra to management is, plan your flight, fly your plan. As we unpack the tools needed, an emphasis will also be put on demonstrating how management teams have the tools to not only optimize their deposits, but track their performance against the optimized plan. If managers fail to do this, investors today will punish management. Before we get there, let's look at some basic concepts that underpin mine optimization. The basic elements related to mining cash flows are neatly summarized by the mining triangle. The first element is the metal price or prices. The metal price or prices assumed are the single most impactful variable on net present value. The price assumptions adopted are key to mine optimization, ergo. We will spend some time in a later video discussing this important topic. The second is grade. There are various grades that need to be understood because metal grades have an equally impactful result on the net present value calculation. We will spend more time on this topic when we unpack the formulation of the basic mining equation. The third is cost. Microeconomics defined the concept of fixed and variable costs. Whilst this concept is well embedded in the thinking of miners, the modeling of these costs is poorly done. We will dedicate much time to discussing this concept and its application, as it is a major component of the optimization algorithm described in Mining Economics Explained. Fourth, production. Mining is peculiar in that production is not defined by the product produced. Rather, it is defined by the volumes of tons that are moved and processed. Tons mined and processed drive costs rather than the metals produced. The metals produced drive revenue. This is a cardinal concept to grasp and fundamental to mining economics. Fifth, capital investment. In order to establish a mine, a significant capital investment is required. Moreover, when that investment has been made and the mine has been established, there is an ongoing investment requirement commonly referred to as sustaining capital. This is the investment that management teams must realize superior returns on. If they do not, that money will be invested elsewhere in alternative projects that will yield higher returns. A key message here is, tons drives costs. Grades drive revenue. Grade always trumps scale because of this. Smaller higher grade mines will always outperform low grade high tonnage counterparts from an investment return perspective. High grade mines are also extremely useful in a greater mining company's overall portfolio for the same reason. As Jason has pointed out, it is essential to maximize returns for shareholders. If maximum returns are not prioritized, then an opportunity cost is incurred. An opportunity cost is the return on investment foregone when compared to another investment that would have offered higher returns. Mining companies compete in capital markets and therefore, understanding how to maximize returns for a mining project is the fundamental mission of mining economics. To do this we have to optimize the cutoff grade and the optimal production rate or scale of operations to minimize operating costs and maximize profitability. This requires comprehensive, dynamic modeling of a myriad of assumptions, technical and economic, as outlined in this slide. Multiple cash flow profiles can be generated for a single deposit, based on the mining and processing path selected. The trick is to discover the mining and processing path that maximizes cash flows for a given ore body. To do this we have to model the ore deposit and make a myriad of assumptions, technical and economic, as outlined in this slide. To achieve this, we have to understand the sweet spot of a peculiar ore body. By determining the cutoff grade of a deposit and the optimal economic costs to produce at and by taking into account all the value drivers, we can estimate the maximum discounted cash flow that we can reasonably expect. Before we explore this, 
Let's first consider key elements we need to consider in an optimization algorithm. There are six elements to the cash flow profile that we need to be conscious of when maximizing cash flows. The first is the quantum investment required. The greater the investment, the lower the net present value. The key elements driving the initial investment are primarily the scale of operations and the complexity of the operations. The bigger the investment, the bigger the contingency allowance. Ergo, finding the right size shoe is a critical optimization element for maximizing the net present value. The second element and as an axiom, the larger the footprint the longer it will take to build the required infrastructure. Net present value embeds the idea of the time value of money. As a result, the longer things take to build the more harm to the value of that money expressed as a lower net present value. The third element, once the infrastructure has been built, the mine has to ramp up production to a steady state. The larger the footprint and scale, the longer the time needed to reach steady state production. Time is money, and the longer it takes to sell metals, the net present value is negatively impacted. There are many reasons that can retard the reaching the steady state production. For example, in underground mines it depends on the rate of development that can be achieved, in an open pit mine it may depend on the equipment matching. The processing plant is also a key player in the ramp-up equation and the size and complexity of this infrastructure can play a detrimental role in the production ramp-up. The fourth component is the steady-state production level. This is the level that all the infrastructure is nameplated or the maximum production design capacity. Determining the nameplate production rate is a key optimization parameter that needs to be optimized against the ore body's economic capacity. This is an important aspect of allowing the ore body to dictate and will be a key focus area in subsequent conversations. The fifth component is what is determined the life of mine. Miners can estimate the life of mine by dividing the defined mineral resource by the rate of production. A key optimization is to consider the maximum value by trading off the life of mine against the scale of production. The sixth and final component is the payback period. Investors should be preoccupied by the payback period because it indicates how long it will take for them to retire their risk exposure. Once the payback has been required, investors then seek to be rewarded with the return period. The longer the return period the higher net net present value and the higher the net present value the more incentivized the investor will be to invest. Great job Maya. All the concepts that we have talked about so far need to find their way into a model that dynamically tests all the variables simultaneously and systematically. We also need to be able to simplistically represent the output. The hill of value is a great way to visualize an optimized solution. This was first conceptualized and proposed by Brian Hall and described in his book, Cut Off Grades and Optimizing the Strategic Mind Plan. This visualization, the hill of value, has become a useful tool to represent two key decision variables, namely the rate of production and the cutoff grade to be applied to the ore deposit set against net present value. This representation allows one to read off the optimal rate of production and cutoff grade that will maximize the discounted free cash. To generate a hill of value, a dynamic cash flow model is required that combines an ore deposits grade tonnage curve welded together with microeconomic cost curves. This is achieved by the design of a cutoff grade algorithm integrated with a scaling cost curve algorithm. These two algorithms also need to dynamically recognize varying capital intensity factors related to scale and simultaneously consider varying construction time periods. As costs are dynamically varied, the algorithm also needs to recognize dynamically varying head grades that impact the plant recovery. Fundamentally, the lower the cutoff grades, the lower the head grades, and the lower the head grades, the lower the metal recovery rate in the plant. Modeling this ensures that cutoff grades on the low end realistically reflect reality. Fundamentally, it inhibits cutoff grades that would typically be set too low by management, only to be penalized by lower recoveries. Moreover, lower cutoff grades also perversely incentivize bigger footprints. Bigger footprints are more complex 
and therefore attract greater risk and greater capital intensity. We will now spend more time looking at each of these concepts and consider how we construct and integrate into a comprehensive dynamic model that ensures that the OR body dictates decision making. I trust that this video has been informative and helpful, and I invite you to continue our journey by watching more of the videos that follow.